Every now and again, if you're strolling on YouTube, uh, you'll come across a video or a statement that's in a video that you want to respond to. And normally, you could leave a comment down below if you go and leave both the comments, but you'll find that the comments are restricted to basically 500 characters. Well, what happens if the comments you want to leave is longer than 500 characters? Well, if you're a YouTuber, you have an option. You have the ability to create a video that's a response to the video you were just watching. And so I came by uh, this uh, channel here. Um, her name is Music Kim. That's the channel name. And uh, she has a title, Guys Benefit. And she had this to say. Hey guys, it's Kimberly, and why is it that in society, guys have more benefits than us girls do? As in, to when we go to the beach or something, and we see a guy who's half naked, and he could take his shirt off without anyone complaining. It's like if us girls do that, then it's a whole different story. I mean, the only reason why we think. Okay, so that's the whole thing here. Uh, this girl is uh, uh, of Russian videos where she's of an Asian background. She talks about uh, the, uh, her, her uh, Asian-ness and, and so on and so forth. And the, one of the things I found uh, uh, ironic is that, uh, not necessarily ironic, ironic is not necessarily the proper term for this. Uh, the Asian culture is a lot like the Greek culture, the Syrian culture, a lot of the older uh, family-oriented cultures are a lot like this. Uh, and a large chunk of this, in terms of the questions on how guys and girls are treated, in terms of how the differences in how they're treated, often have to do, and particularly in today's society, what we call our more secular or Western society, are actually leftovers from uh, uh, the older societies, but because we have immigrants in this country, and we're a large chunk of immigrants, uh, a lot of the old country influences really stay around. Uh, but there's also good reason for them as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about guys and girls' benefits, but I'm going to talk about it from the guy's perspective. And I'm not a typical guy. I would actually say I'm now off the guy's, guy's uh, scale. Uh, Gender-wise, yeah, I'm a guy, but uh, otherwise, other than the gender, uh, I don't fit into the standard guy mold. Uh, the closest uh, categoriz categorization you can give me is geek or nerd, but even there, I don't quite fit into that particular mold. Uh, so that's where I'm coming from, but I've had, because I've never had a particular peer group that I hung out with, I've had friends from a variety of different peer groups, and so I got to observe uh, from my culture, from other cultures, and so on and so forth, uh, I got to observe how other cu cultures, how guys behave from other cultures. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give the guys' secrets away to the girls. So this is for you, the girls. This is how the guys behave and what they think of girls when you're not around. Uh, and the put it frankly, is that guys, in comparison to girls, are predominantly sexually oriented. In other words, the relationships that they form particularly early on have nothing to do with emotion. It has to do with their physical, it's more of an issue of lust than it is of love. And if the girl is willing to give up love for that lust, then there's no issue. And this is why girls can't go bare-chested bare and guys can't, because, well, for, for most girls, the chest isn't, for a male chest is not a sexual thing. For guys, it is sexual. And guys will very rarely control themselves around in, in such an environment. Now, it may not seem like it, but 
if you look at the statistics and you look at what's actually happening in Europe, which they consider to be more open and uh, sexually free, and they do have a lot of nude beaches in there, what they've found is that in those areas there, you have an increased level of pedophilia in those areas uh, than you would in other areas that don't have that. If you take area to area, you go to a more conservative area, and then you go to a more liberal area. The more liberal area has a larger incidence of pedophilia, a larger incidence of uh, uh, sex, uh, child sexual ex exploitation, a larger amount of sexual exploitation. The, the, one of the groups, the activist groups in Europe, who does the work on tracking um, uh, women's sex slaves, and they track that the women sex slaves go to these open sexual areas more often. They're trafficked to there more often than not. In other words, the so-called liberal area that was opposed to free women has the largest number of sex slaves around. And what this talks about, what this demonstrates, is how the sexual orientation, the sexual behavior, rather than an emotional and spiritual orientation, destroys everything around it. It brings in more violence, it brings in more drug addiction, it brings in more alcoholism, and it brings in more violence. And this is statistically shown in every section of the U.S. where, or in Canada, any, where you have a large, we call it morally loose society, or a section of society that's in that, that's in that city area there, like a red light district or something like that, this is where you find these areas are all high crime rates. And it has more to do, the crime rate has more to do with this attitude of open sexuality than it does uh, anything else. And it's because once the sexual behaviors and the in in inhibitions are released, are re and the inhibitions are removed, then what happens is the moral compass, the moral guidance, and the, and the conscience that normally says, no, don't do this, is fettered and removed. So there is no more, don't do this, and the rest of it follows along. Now, this is how this actually applies in uh, an Asian or family-oriented society. Uh, and Asians, the Greeks, the Italians, a lot of these older societies uh, and what happens now, a lot of the Greeks and it, it are becoming more modern Euro, Euro, European, becoming less family oriented, but the Asians are still pretty much family oriented. Uh, and my, my, the community that I came out of, that's really much still in, uh, both uh, where I live and uh, where I hang out more enough, often than I think I hang out more often than not in a Greek Syrian community. A lot of them are immigrants, most, uh, like 95% like are immigrants. Uh, I live in a predominantly Asian immigrant community here in Toronto. Uh, my supermarket is Asian. So uh, I've lived in an Asian uh, an immigrant culture for my entire life since I was a baby. And the one thing that I found remarkable is that when I was growing up, uh, and still within the Greek and Syrian community, you always hear the girls complaining, why can't I do X, Y, Z like the boys are doing? Why, do I, why is there a double standard? And there, uh, one of these standards are, include that girls from uh, my cultural background are not allowed to date white boys. And white doesn't necessarily mean a culture, a, co a color. White refers to the Western European culture altogether. So if someone's Western and Europe, uh, 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 more European, and this includes black people, then you're not allowed to hang out with these people. And you're supposed to stick with people from your own culture. And this is particularly told to the girls. The guys have a different standard. The guys are allowed to hang out with uh, the uh, other girls in terms of the other cultures because from, ten, from 15 to 25, boys are expected to sow their wild oats and you, th these girls they're going to be going out with are throwaway girls. They're toys. They're not to be kept and they're not going to be married to. 
And so these boy, these girls, who these boys, these uh, we call culture boys, the cult, the, the, from these culture communities, go out with, are the toys that they're going to be tossed away. And no parent, mother or father, and they are aware of this. This is something that they don't tell the kids. They are aware of what's going on out there with the boys. No one wants their daughter to be a throwaway girl. No one wants their daughter to be a boy toy. And boys do treat girls from this area, from this age period, from 15 to 25, like toys, like a flavor of the month. You hear it in the songs. You hear it uh, everywhere. Where girls are singing primarily about love and about feelings, more often than not, particularly in the rap songs, what do you hear? Uh, and this is not limited to the rap songs, I'm saying particularly and more overtly in the rap songs. Uh, what do you hear? You hear everything about treating a girl like an object. It's about the object. It's about treating the girl as if she, the girl herself, doesn't matter. It's the body part. It's, and, and the thing is, and the guys are like this. It doesn't matter who you are. If a girl, if a boy, a guy sees a breast, they're going to see the breast. They're not going to see you. If they see a sexual part of the body or a part that turns them on, they're not going to see you. And in many cases, guys, when they're with a girl and they're aiming to have uh, uh, sexual relationships with, her, with, with a girl, don't even want the girl to talk to them while they're having sex. And, they, and as soon as they're done, they're gone. Guys have, when, they, when you ask, a girl asks them, and they're not married, do you respect me? The answer really is all the time, no. No boy who, who, ever, who ever sleeps with a girl that they're not going to get married to ever respects the girl. It has nothing to do with that. For the guy, it has to do with sex. And it's now up to the girl to decide whether or not she wants to be treated as that object or not. If you don't want to tre be treated as that object, then you have to remove yourself from that environment. And say, this environment is not for me. I want something different for my life. And again, it has to do with what you want for your life. Because the boys are going to behave the, boy, the way they are going to act. That has never changed. No matter how much uh, singing and dancing, you know, how many... Uh, 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 these after-school specials, none of this stuff has ever changed anything. None of it has had any impact whatsoever. There is no liberalization among the guys. The guys, in terms of for liberalization, for guys, is a good thing because it means that girls are more sexually available. Liberalization is a way to get girls without having to use them, with, uh, having to apply them with liquor, to get them to take their clothes off. If a guy will see this and say, "Ah, yeah, this girl is more liberal," you know, she's willing to take her clothes. This is this is something good for guys. A lot of guys will be happy with it, and, and a lot of guys will actually, if you look at the comments, will cheer this on because this is what they want. They want this liberalization. But if you don't want to be treated as an object. If you want to have that respect, then the conscience and the family matters. And it's more important than the immediate physical gratification or whatever you might be feeling out of it. And the thing is, most girls don't feel that way. If, from the way I've seen, because I hang around a lot with girls, because a lot of, a lot of my behaviors are more like, is like, like a girl, I, don't, I have, was never able to simply look at a girl and say, ah, there's, there's an, a sexual object and ignore the person. I was never able to do that. This is one of the things that makes me a geek. This is one of the things that why I'm still a virgin to this day, uh, like the uh, like the standard geek uh, is, uh, is that I was never able to look at a girl as a physical object, as, as, as a sexual object. Every time I've talked to a girl, and you start saying uh, by hello, and you sit down and you have a conversation with them, the idea of treating the person as an object disappears from me. And it, the simply the physical object doesn't turn me on. For me, it has it has to be within the relationship. There has to be a relationship there in order for me to really feel anything. And if the relationship isn't there, then nothing is felt. So this sort of puts me off to the side there. And the number of people, the people I usually prefer hanging out with, 
uh, particularly in the later days, like now, are primarily girls. And when I hear girls talk about uh, their views on guys and how they feel about their crushes. Girls get excited about holding hands with a boy and how it feels and how they feel melt you know, they feel melty and they feel like, you know, that the world has opened up and they feel like flowers and you know th all this stuff doesn't matter to guys. And I've seen this when I've seen guys who uh, I've hung out with who are players and they'll meet a girl who is particularly more intelligent and the way they play the girl is they'll say exactly what the girl wants to hear about guys. Exactly. They'll open up. They'll cry. They'll, they'll, they'll put on the whole, the whole act, the whole play for the girl. Once they have what they want, it's over and it goes away. The emotions go away. Everything that the girl thought was real was all a lie. And it had one single purpose, and that was to get into bed with the girl. The guy uses the girl's emotions to get at her. The girl is the object. He is the hunter. She is the prey. This is the way it behaves, whether it is with a boy from a particular culture, like Asian culture, the Greek culture, the Syrian culture, the Italian culture, all these cultures, the boys have this macho, this manly type of behavior that's supposed to have. And the girls are the objects they're aiming at. Uh, and it, 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 it's not something that is nice to have, it's not something that, that is nice and the parents who are of these parents of these girls know this. this. And this is something they have kept from you from your childhood. And as you get into your later years, why they say don't do this is to protect you from the things they don't want you to tell they don't want you to know about just yet. Because these are the things that they went through. It's not that they don't know, they have gone through it, but they don't know how to sit down they don't know how to sit down and tell you about the realities of what's actually going on when you're dealing with boys and girls. And as I said, I've seen it from the guy's perspective, where they care nothing about the girl, and this is primarily the issue, uh, and, and it's most guys like this. And I'll even tell you, if you meet a cute guy, and there's a cute guy, this is for high school girls and, and, and even middle school guys, middle school girls, if you're looking at that cute, hunky guy, you think you may have gotten him, but every hunky guy I've known and I've seen has one main girlfriend, and then they have what they call options on the side. And not that they have, they're cheating with one other girl, girlfriend. A, girl, a girlfriend always finds out, you know, in high school, in this particular drama, that a boy is cheating on them. Uh-uh. It's a lot more than that. The popular boys, the hunks, the, the jocks, no, they have one girl. They don't have one girl, but and they don't have some of they're cheating on you with. They have what they call options, and it's not just one. Op they have several options. There's a whole list of people, of, of particularly girls, that they have. They know they could go to, and they can get favor. What they call sexual favors from these girls that the girlfriend will not do. And again, the joys of how you you view the benefits between boys and girls. Really depends on what you want out of life. Do you want a family? Do you want to grow you know, do you want to grow old and have a family which is which is forever? Or do you wanna do you wanna grow old alone? A lot of the a lot of these players, when they get older, wind up alone because they never develop the skills. They never develop the ability to move beyond the sexuality and have any form of affection for anybody. And that makes these people miserable and alone. And a lot of these people, when they get into their 30s and 40s, either drink themselves to death or they commit suicide. And I know some of the, the people who have gotten older like this, who, and they're, they're in the older ages, who hate their lives. And that's because they really haven't been able, hasn't have really gotten beyond that whole physical macho male thing, 
and their ability to develop uh, affection for people. The, the ability to have real love. Real love is not sexuality. Sexuality destroys real love. Because it confuses affection for sexuality. And so if you want affection and you want emotion in your life, and have that relationship, then sexuality will destroy that because that's what it does. It confuses the affection you need for a relationship with sexuality. If that's what you feel, if you feel and you're telling the person, whoa, sex is, sex is an important part of a relationship, it's not. Sex is something that occurs as, as a consequence of a well-developed relationship. If the relationship is not properly developed, and I'm talking about full commitment, then sexuality at some point in time will destroy that relationship. And the thing is, 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 is this whole thing of guys versus girls and guys benefits versus girls benefits, girls benefits comes down to a choice of what you want from life. And for me, I, I've chosen to move away from sexuality. Uh, I don't, when a guy is being sexual or, you know, talking about these things, I tend to move away. How you end up handling this, or you end up dealing with these things, is up to you. It really depends on what you want from life. Because these things and how you deal with them will have an impact on what will happen in your life later on. The impact can be immediate, or the, the impact can be further on down the line. Anyways, this is my comment. I hope this sheds a bit of light on the subject. Uh, it would be interesting to hear your opinions on this, uh, on, on what you think, and, and, and what, what decisions and conclusions you've come to. Anyway, uh, thank you, and uh, I'll see you on the interwebs.